Welcome to episode five hundred eight. Rich Kinder, oil and gas pipeline king of the world. This is an outline of episode five hundred eight. There are three reasons we study Rich Kinder. First, he is the oil and gas pipeline king of the world. Second, he once worked for Enron with Kenneth Lay. Third, he founded his company Kinder Morgan at the age of fifty. Three. Let us meet Rich Kinder. Tremendous technological advances uh, in drilling technology, uh, in completing wells, and, and let, let me explain. I'm not in that end of the business. We're a toll road. We run pipelines and terminals. Eighty-four thousand miles of pipeline around America. One hundred sixty-five terminals. So we're sort of insulated from that, and we're not. Because whatever the involved. price is, it's still going to move around. That's right. Uh, but but the upstream. Uh, uh, deserve so much compliments because uh, they have really pioneered the ability to get a lot more oil out of the ground and natural gas, and that's what the shale plays were all about. And the corollary or the side effect of that has been they produce so much uh, that uh, supply demand does work, uh, and uh, uh, it drove the prices down. And we have uh, worldwide uh, you have a market of around 93 uh, million barrels a day of uh, crude oil. We're oversupplied. Rich Kinder was born in 1944 in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. In 1966, at the age of 22, he earned his undergraduate degree from the University of Missouri. Two years later, he earned his law degree from the University of Missouri. At the University of Missouri, he became a good friend with Ken Lay, who later became the CEO of Enron and was involved in the biggest corporate collapse in the history of the United States. His first job was working for Florida Gas Transmission Company. This is the pipeline operation of Florida Gas Transmission Company. Florida Gas Transmission Company would later be renamed as Enron. How he started Kinder Morgan in 1997 with 40 million dollars. Rich Kinder had been working as president of Enron for years, with the understanding that Kenneth Lay was going to step aside in 1996 and let him take control. When that did not happen, he partnered with another University of Missouri alumni, William Morgan, to buy Enron's liquid pipeline for $40 million. This is how he started. This is a diagram of the oil industry, and he is the midstream king of the world. The upstream is oil exploration, and the downstream is oil refinery. In between, he is the oil and gas pipeline king. The tremendous technological advances uh, in drilling technology, uh, in completing wells, and, and let, let me explain. I'm not in that end of the business. We're a toll road. We run pipelines and terminals, 84,000 miles of pipeline around America, 165 terminals. So we're sort of insulated from that, and we're not Because whatever involved. the price is, it's still going to move around. That's right. Uh, but, but the upstream uh, deserves so much compliments because uh, they have really pioneered the ability to get a lot more oil out of the ground and natural gas, and that's what the shale plays were all about. And the corollary or the side effect of that has been they produce so much uh, that uh, supply demand does work, uh, and uh, uh, it drove the prices down. And we have uh, worldwide, uh, you have a market of around 93 uh, million barrels a day of uh, crude oil. We're oversupplied, depending on which experts you listen to, by a million to two million barrels. Uh, and that will at some point come back in balance. Where that price of, of crude oil will go, I don't know. Uh, you can't satisfy the demand uh, at $60 prices, but I don't know if it's 70 or 75. Certainly doesn't probably need to be $100 again. Uh, but it'll eventually even out supply demand, then we'll probably overproduce again, uh, <laughs> and we'll have another downturn. Oh, real estate. He also grew by merger and acquisition, the largest of which was El Paso Energy, which he acquired for more than $21 billion. And in between, a lot of opposition from the environmentalists. 
In 2014, at his peak, he was worth 11 billion dollars. Giving back, he sponsored a constitutional law center back at his alma mater, University of Missouri. And really, the most important, in my judgment, as、uh, we can't exist as a country unless subsequent generations really understand what an exceptional nation this is and what the principles were. That led to the creation of our system of government and our democracy,、uh, and that was what led to the idea of really creating a center in an interdis- interdisciplinary mode、uh, of studying constitutional democracy. What the founders really believed, feeling、uh, as much in-depth review of what the founding fathers really thought. So our hope is that this institute will be able to grant、uh, more understanding. Uh, to be able to give our students a better opportunity to study what makes this country great, and maybe in a very small way contribute、uh, to the ongoing, incredibly important role of democracy in the United States. Thank you. What have I learned today? Two things. First, how at the age of 53, he co-founded Kinder Morgan with 40 million dollars and 175 employees, and built the fourth biggest oil company in the United States. Second, he grew by merger and acquisition, and he became the oil and gas pipeline king of the world. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Richard Kinder Nine Lessons. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.